Unleash the power of knowledge and connect with the heartbeat of the African diaspora. Download our African Diaspora News Channel app now on Google Play and Apple App Store. Stay informed with authentic and diverse perspectives, breaking news and cultural insights. Immerse yourself in a community that celebrates unity, resilience and progress. Experience the vibrancy of the diaspora at your fingertips. Don't miss out. Empower your perspective today. Search African Diaspora News Channel and join the conversation. Hello everyone, my name is Nalini Mfulwe and it is my absolute pleasure to welcome you to the latest edition of the African Diaspora News Channel where we unravel the stories that shape our world and our communities. Today we dive deep into the currents of information from the pulse of politics to the heartbeat of entertainment. We've got it all covered, so please stay tuned for a news experience like no other. Now in the heart of London, within its vibrant buzz and diverse layers, stories of triumph and challenge weaving together painting a picture of resilience, ambition, and the power of representation. Today, we shift our focus towards an inspiring chapter of British history embodied by the remarkable journey of Diane Abbott, affectionately known as Auntie D within the Black British community. In the heart of British political and business landscape, a storm brews, casting shadows over corridors of power and boardrooms alike. Now the revelation regarding Frank Hester, a significant figure whose generosity to a conservative party marks him as its largest donor, unveils a troubling discourse that shakes the very foundation of professional conduct and ethical responsibility. Now with donations amounting to 10 million pounds, Frank Hester's influence within the Tories is Undeniable, yet his remarks have Diane Bart Abbott, Britain's longest serving black MP, suggesting an unfounded and unjustifiable disrespect based not only on policy or politics, but seemingly on her identity, actually ignites a debate of criticism and demand for accountability. Another narrative unfolds where Hester's comments challenge the ethos of diversity and respect within the workplace and society. Now, the Conservative Party's biggest donor told colleagues look, that looking at Diane Abbott makes him want to hate all black women and that Diane should be shot. Is the Prime Minister proud to be bankrolled by someone using racist and misogynist language when he says the member for Hackney North and Stoke Newington makes you want to hate all black women. Minister, Mr Speaker, the alleged comments were wrong, they were racist, and he has now, as I said, the comments were wrong, they were racist. He has rightly apologised for them, and that remorse, and that remorse should be accepted. Rishi Sunak eager to forgive but the opposition not willing to forget. Mr Speaker, the man bankrolling the Prime Minister also said that the member for Hackney North should be shot. How low would he have to sink? What racist, woman-hating threat of violence would he have to make before the Prime Minister plucked up the courage to hand back the £10 million that he's taken from him? As I said, the gentleman apologised genuinely for his comments and that remorse should be accepted. Now, at, at, at a time when it, inclusivity should eliminate our part towards progress, such remarks cast long shadows questioning the integrity of the support channeled into political campaigns and the very essence of leadership in corporate and political realms. Let us pause and reflect, right? The essence of democracy and civil society is built upon principles of respect, equality, and mutual understanding. When those who hold the purse strings of political entities adopt views that actually segregate and belittle based solely on race or gender, they do more than expose personal feelings. They undermine the social fabric that binds us all. 
and yet in this moment of unease, there lies a profound opportunity for introspection and action. The response from this party, the reassurance from the TPP regarding diversity and inclusion, and even the attempts at apology signal a recognition of wrongdoing and a potential step towards rectification, I guess. But this incident must serve as a call to political parties, to businesses and individuals alike. The woman at the heart of this story tried and tried and tried to have her say in the Commons, rising dozens of times through PMQs, trying to get her own question, but not picked by Speaker Lindsay Hoyle. She's accused him of failing democracy. She did get a visit from her former party leader. Miss Abbott said she asked to have the Labour whip restored. But witnesses tell me he simply dodged the question. To reflect on the values they, they champion and behaviours they actually condone. For in the richness of diversity and the embrace of inclusivity lies the strength of our society, enabling it to withstand the storms of prejudice and emerge resilient, united in purpose and dignity. Let us then move forward with the lesson that accountability and change are not only necessary but vital in our continuous journey towards a more fair and respectful world. May the conversations sparked by these revelations inspire a more renewed commitment to fostering environments where every individual, irrespective of their background, can thrive without the shadows of bias and discrimination. Now, as we finish off today's story, let us carry forward the resolve to cultivate spaces at work, in, in politics and throughout our communities that actually honour and respect every person. Together, let us purge, urge to build a future marked by unity, understanding and an unwavering commitment to justice and equality for all. And with that being said, we want to hear from you. What are your thoughts in regards to this? Please be sure to share your comments in the comment section and give this video a thumbs up. That is it from me. Till we meet again, it is goodbye for now.